can and I am going to do a bit of a chit chatty get ready with me type thing uh, using a couple of things I haven't used before. Mainly it's all stuff I've used before. It's in projects and stuff and I'm going to do some filming today so I thought I would um, do a get ready thing. Um, I have already um, moisturised and primed um, my main part of my face. Uh, recently I hold this little do flicky. This is the knockoff version of the Silly Sponge. Um, it's quite firm. Um, so yeah, I'm going to see how this works for foundation. Um, I also have my knockoff of the um, Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. So the foundation that I will be using today is the uh, CoverGirl True Blend. Um, this says L2 on the back. It's actually a combination of a couple of different foundations. Um, this is one of the ones I'm trying to use up this year. I'm really not sure I like it. I think it's probably because I can blend it. Um, <laughs> so, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a pump on the Billy Thongs. I always thought it was really funny that nobody actually like made any comment about how the silly sponge is called a silly sponge and people just like use it and are like oh it doesn't really work um yeah duh, it's called the silly sponge not supposed to work and yet here I am using it so I mean, I'm not really too, I don't really care too much how I put my makeup on, as long as like it goes on and it doesn't look terrible. My biggest problem is that stuff sinks into my pores. Uh, I am using Professional today. No, I'm not using Professional. I'm using uh, L'Oreal Base Magic. much does exactly what it does when I use um, a sponge or a brush and I have like really deep bits here on my nose it doesn't get into that oh, but I only did half my face and I look very very pasty now I mean, I am very, very pasty. And of course, like, I didn't bother watching any videos about how you're supposed to use this thing. I just kind of, like, watched a whole bunch of, like, YouTubers attempt to use this thing and saw what worked and what didn't work. It was really funny, actually, because the first person I watched uh, was Jeffree Star. And he actually quite liked it. And uh, then, yeah, all these other people tried it and like hated it. And I was like, that's really weird. Really interesting how one person likes it and somebody else but doesn't. But it's like some people like using um, a sponge or a brush and other people don't. You know, like some people would prefer to use the like artiste type brushes um as I said from here you you couldn't tell one way or the other um but yeah I mean foundation isn't my favourite ever really um I'm just going to use this knockoff sponge just for a final bit of blending. It is these days my preferred way to put on my foundation. I 
Um, this is not quite as soft as the Real Techniques and it feels more foamy. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, it's pretty much the same, it's just that if the texture is ever so slightly different. Um, but that did improve the way the makeup is sitting on my skin. It's not my favourite foundation. Um, I really can't attempt it just to ditch this foundation. <laughs> Shows you how much I love her, right? Absolutely love it. I look so pale in the monitor, it's quite disturbing. Um, in reality, I don't look quite so pale. Just, I'm not sure how this video will look when it's, when it's gone. Um, I'm going to do a bit of under eye concealing with the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in 15. Claire, fair Claire. Um, yeah, I've been trying to get another container, like another thing of this, but this is the one that is always sold out here. I did see it in Kmart the other day, but I don't have a gift card for Kmart at the moment. So, yeah, I didn't want to spend actual money. I want to use my gift card that I have for Priceline and Priceline hasn't had any and when they had like all the makeup stuff like 40% off I wanted to get it then but of course they didn't have it then so that's kind of annoying now I actually don't have any under eye setting powder and most of the other powders I use I don't 100% like um, the end result but anyway I am going to use this low pressed face powder in very light um, and a big fluffy brush thing with nice handles um, I shared that in a Whole recently as well. So I've been um, making quite a few like videos for um, nail type stuff recently. Lots of stuff without my face in it and you know, reasons for that. Um, not having such a great time of things at the moment. Um, quite a few um, mental health issues which of course I'm not going to put in my title thingy because if I do um, and I attempt to monetize a video the monetization will be taken off of it I had um, something like six videos or something recently demonetized and they were old ones and not like new ones or anything um, and it was because I had mentioned um, my mental health in them and I put it in the um, tags. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of this because you know it's only set underneath my eyes. Try to stop the um, concealer from creasing. It has not been successful. <laughs> the So Susan uh, Water Based Pure Luminizer, which I had to depot into this little container. Just going to put a little bit on a synthetic brush. And a bit across the cheekbones. And then take the sponge. You're probably not even going to really notice this by the time I finish, but I'm trying to use it up. And it's not my favourite product. Um, anything that's like cream, cheek type product. Not my favourite product. So I'm making an attempt to use it up. I suppose I could like mix it into my foundation, but that would mean actually um, maybe pulling out my little palette. I suppose I could do that. It's not like I don't have a makeup palette thing that I could mix on. The other thing is that this it tends to pick up on the texture of your skin, so I've got to be like really careful that I don't put it too far this way, otherwise it just goes into the um, bigger pores that I've got under there. 
which is not a great look. See that powder looks like it's gone brown. I'm not having luck with a lot of things at the moment. <laughs> not gonna lie. Okay, um, I'm gonna use some of these just just to warm things back up again. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna take the powder again with a Real Techniques big fluffy. And I'm just going to make sure. This is kind of just like my process. Yes, it takes me forever to do my makeup sometimes. Especially because I tend to watch videos while I'm doing it. And, you know, talking and doing videos at the same time. And trying to do makeup at the same time. This is not necessarily an easy process. Um, but we will, we will make it work. So I'm going to take... Um, this unicorn handle brush which is kind of like fairly dense. Um, this is not really a contour colour. This is these are the Avon Arabian Glow Bronzing Pearls which I've had for absolutely ages in one of my projects. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to Put some colour back in my very pasty pale face. It's probably a bit orange, but I actually don't give a shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as I was saying, I've been doing a lot more like nail type videos. Um, a lot of the... I've just joined in a new a couple of new groups um, that are like nail art related. Because nail art is this thing that I like really love doing. I just don't always have the mojo to do it. Particularly with like the mental health type stuff. Um, in case you don't know, like if you haven't been on my channel or haven't watched any of my really, really old videos, um, I have um, a PTSD and I have anxiety. And I have uh, depression. That's such a lovely combination. Um, and as a result, sometimes I is not doing so good. And there's been some recent events in my life, which unfortunately I cannot talk about for legal reasons. Um, that have legal and privacy reasons actually because they involve a minor um, and that minor has not given consent and technically can't give consent uh, for it to be discussed at this point in time so that's not going to happen um, um, and basically it's just kind of like done a lot of triggering type stuff for me and the fact that the world is so super duper negative at the moment. Yeah, it really is not helpful. Um, uh, a tiny weeny bit of noise contour. Not that it makes much difference to my huge honker. I have a very large nose. Um, genetic. No, I'm not going to have rhinoplasty and get the stupid thing fixed. It's not. It's not broken or anything. It's just really big. <laughs> it's just, just really big. I look so pale in the monitor. I should stop looking at myself in the monitor because I just look really, really pale. For blush, I am going to use um, this Eco Minerals. Um, it's in Amethyst. I'm going to use this brush here. Um, this is another one that is in a project. And I'm trying to use it up. It's kind of a purpley kind of colour. I mean, it's called Amethyst, so you know, you kind of expect it to be purpley. Go figure. Um, 
Yeah, so I haven't really been very um, present in recent times because of my mental state not being so great. Um, it's been kind of like really difficult and there are a lot of people who are affected by it, the whole situation, and affected by me being like quite depressed. Um, you know, depressed to the point of not actually getting out of bed um, or spending really, really long hours in bed. Um, yeah, which is, you know, it's not ideal. Um, and then I am going to use, I can't decide which highlighter I'm going to use. I'm going to use some of this little rock illuminate first. So this, um, and yeah, I'm kind of heavy handed with powder products. I'm, I'm sorry if that offends people, but actually I don't care. <laughs> this is my face. Um, yeah, so there's... It's, it's kind of been a little difficult and, like, I've had, like, no motivation. And the videos where I'm not showing my face um, are actually kind of easier to do because I don't feel the need to... Um, it doesn't matter what my face looks like. And although it's not a requirement for me to put makeup on to film my videos, I feel better doing that. Um, I'm going to top it with a little bit of this Eco Minerals um, Illuminate in White Light, which I'll just show you. If you <laughs> Eco Minerals is an Australian um, brand. Look at that. It's, it's, it's blinding. It's so gorgeous. But whoa, camera just wakey wakey. Um, yeah, so, um, so yeah, there's, you know, life is, can be kind of difficult sometimes for people, and, um, you know, people say, oh, you know, you should, you know, if you need to talk about it, then, like, you know, just contact me, and, you know, that's all very well, but the thing with having depression is that, and, and having the kind of mental disorders that I have, is I don't want to feel like I have to chase interaction with people. I figure if people don't want to talk to me, then they're just not going to talk to me. And um, I'll just, like, I just assume that it's something that I've done or that people, you know, they, they just don't want to hear about it. And so... I, I don't go telling them about it. And the other thing is, is that, quite frankly, I don't necessarily want to talk about what's going on with me. Um, I'm just going to spray a bit of this makeup mist. Um, it's it's um, from Kmart. And it's just like this little bottle. And I really don't know if it does anything. But it does help to tone down the uh, powderiness. And it doesn't really smell like anything. I guess it's kind of like spraying water on your face. I am, um, and it doesn't have an ingredient in it. It just any ingredients on this. It just says makeup mist. I don't know if it does anything. <laughs> um, so yeah. So as I was, one of my friends uh, not that long ago, she was like, she asked, she I'd made some random post on Facebook that was along the lines of, you know, I feel like shit or something like that. And um, she private messaged me. Um, I'm going to use the designer brand's eye primer. Um, she private messaged me to ask me if everything was okay, you know, and how things were going. And my response was meh. And you know, we talked a little bit more, and then she said, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be supportive, but that isn't really much to go on. 
And I'm like, well, if I say meh to you when you ask me how things are going, I don't want to talk about that. I, I genuinely don't necessarily want to talk about how I'm feeling. I just want people to talk to me. I just want to have a conversation. I want people to want to have a conversation with me that has nothing to do with my mental illness. It has nothing to do with the way that I feel about myself, about what's going on in my life, or any of that kind of stuff. I just want to talk like a normal person. And we then went on to have like a really good conversation for like two hours via text message um, or messenger. I generally don't talk on the phone. I used to as a teenager, not so much anymore. Um, to set the primer, I'm just going to use a little bit of this cream eyeshadow that's in one of my projects. Um, I, I just don't... There's a, a lot of people who have mental illness, they don't want you to focus on the fact that they have mental illness. They don't want you to... Um, say, oh, you know, how are you feeling? Like, you know, in, I don't know if it's everywhere in the world, but in Australia we have this thing, it's called Are You Okay? It's like this one day a year where you're supposed to ask your mates, are you okay? <sighs> the thing is, people who are like me, our response to that question is going to be, yeah, fine. Because we don't want to talk about it. <laughs> That's, we don't want you to ask us if we're okay because some thing prompted you to do it. We want you to ask us if we're okay because you actually give a shit and be prepared for us to say yeah for, we are, we're fine and not give you any details because you know maybe we just don't want to talk about how shit we feel or how we feel like we're worthless and have no value. Uh, I'm just going to use a little bit of this Eye Express from Maybelline Cream Eyeshadow in Touch of Toffee. Um, we, you know, sometimes we just want people to indicate that they consider us to be more than just a mental illness. There's like other things that we want to talk about and other things that we want to do and we don't want to be reminded of how broken we actually are with every conversation. And the fact that a lot of times people are, it's almost like they're too scared to reach out to somebody who has mental illness in case, you know, they say the wrong thing or whatever. Um, uh, you're not going to say the wrong thing if you just say, hey, how you doing? That's, you know, if you say, hey, you know, I heard this really cool joke today. And it made me think of you, so I thought I would, like, share it with you. Um, I'm just using this shadow here. This is the um, LA Colors Eyeshadow Palette in Blushing Nudes. Um, yeah, don't, don't necessarily ask how we are expecting us to talk about that. You know, talk to us about stuff. Like, you know... I was watching this movie today and and it was like really, really weird and, you know, I, I saw this and I saw that and, you know, just the kind of general conversations that you have with all your other friends. I mean, do you really ask all your friends who don't have mental illness how they are all the time? No, you talk about stuff that you're mutually interested in. This is the same with somebody who's mentally ill. Talk to them about the stuff that you're mutually interested in. And you might actually find they talk to you and they're more likely to actually talk to you about the important stuff at some point because they actually think you might actually give a shit. Um, I'm also going to use a bit of this one here. It's called Overtime. Um, this is a knockoff of one of the Urban Decay palettes. Can you tell? Um, this is the Shadows palette from Models Prefer. I'm one of those people, I will use a shimmery shadow in the crease and not care one little bit. I just don't care. Um, and the other thing that that comes along with that whole um, just, you know, talking to people thing is um, just recently on Facebook there was this post going around about 
Um, if you want to commit suicide, consider this first. And then it was this whole story about this mother and how um, she like found the the person's body or, or something. I didn't actually read the whole thing. After about the first three lines of it, I was kind of getting pissed off. The worst thing that you could possibly say to somebody who is suffering from, um, who feels the need to commit suicide, is think about somebody else. Because do you realise what you're saying when you say to somebody who wants to commit suicide, think about somebody else? You're actually saying that the way that they feel and what they're going through is actually not as important as all of the other people. You're actually more likely to push them because to like a bad, a, like a worse place, because they think you don't care. They think that all you care about is yourself and how you might actually feel instead of how they actually feel. And I think it's an important thing for people to actually remember is that you don't help somebody with mental illness by telling them to look to consider how other people would feel if they died. Because you don't actually think anybody gives a shit. And by people saying to you, look, you know, how I would feel if you died is actually more important than what you're experiencing in this particular moment. Uh, I'm going to use some of the Eco Minerals Cocoa Eyeshadow. It's like a pigment type eyeshadow. So yeah, that, um, that post like really pissed me off. And I actually made a post myself on uh, Facebook in response to it. Um, basically saying that, you know, please don't do that. Don't guilt trip somebody who is on the edge. Don't make them feel worse because they're on the edge. Just, you know, talk to them like they're a normal person. Acknowledge what they're going through. Acknowledge their feelings. Yeah, you might not understand and you might not think that it's what they're the pain that they're experiencing is valid, you you might think you'd been through worse, or you might think you know somebody who's been through worse, but that just invalidates them, and that makes them feel worse, it makes them feel more like, nobody gives a shit about me, everybody only cares about themselves, or Joe Blogs, or whatever, they don't actually care what I'm going through, and all you're going to do is make them feel worse and making them feel worse is not going to stop them from killing themselves <laughs> it's more likely to actually have it um, happening so guilt tripping somebody who is having a rough time is always a really really terrible thing the other one that is really really terrible is telling somebody who's going through a rough time that there are people who are worse off than them because that is a very subjective point of view You might have had worse trauma than somebody else. But for some people, the worst thing that's ever happened to them is having somebody say something mean to them when they were five. And nobody's ever done anything like that again. And that actual experience can have a marked effect on that person because it is the most substantial thing that ever happened to them that's why it's a subjective thing so yeah there might be people in the world who to my perspective have things worse off than me and there might be people from my perspective who have it easy but that doesn't make their experience any less valid than mine, that doesn't make their feelings any less valid than mine are, mine is, and I get so frustrated when I hear people saying things like, yes, but there are so many people much worse off, you should be so grateful for what you have, um, no, how about you fuck off, because from my perspective, my situation is as bad as my situation is. Might not be bad from your situation, but it's bad from my situation. 
Um, yeah, so it's one of those, it's one of those areas that I'm like, I get really, um, upset about, um, and it's because of my own personal experience. I've heard it more times than I care to remember that, you know, there are so many people who are so much worse off than you and, you know, people who've been through worse than you've actually been through. And it's like, rationally, there's a part of me that would, you know, agree to that, but it's, it's still my experience and it's still traumatizing to me. And... You know, there are other people who hear what I've been through and they're like, how are you still alive, apart from anything else? How do you manage to keep going day after day? I don't actually have any other choice. I'm that kind of person. <laughs> Super duper stubborn when it comes to staying alive. At least in those terms. It's not to say that I have not contemplated suicide. Um, and I have actually attempted suicide. Uh, the first time I attempted suicide, I was 11. Um, obviously, it wasn't successful. Uh, this is the Starlux Ultra Olive Eye Pencil. I'm just going to run that along the lower lash line. Um, the last time I seriously contemplated suicide, I was... 18. Um, and that was basically, um, yeah, that was a bit of a turning point for me at that particular point, but um, not necessarily in a good way. But it wasn't long after that that I actually um, ended up pregnant with my eldest children. Um, this is the Emite Makeup Spire Pencil. It's basically a uh, nude. I'm just going to put that on the bottom waterline. Because I can. Um, yeah, so I, I do actually understand the uh, mindset of a person who contemplates suicide, having been there more than once in my life. Um, I also have several friends who have lost people to suicide. Um, technically, my best friend's death was a suicide by drug overdose. And my uncle... Um, my mother's brother committed suicide in 1972. So I've been touched by it. I can understand how people get um, upset about people who, who do it. Um, but I can also understand why people do it. And it's why I kind of, I, you know, I say things like I'm saying in this video, Please, don't guilt trip somebody who's feeling suicidal. Don't make them, don't say to them, hey, think about how your mum would feel or think about how your brother would feel because you're invalidating them. You're telling them that what they're feeling isn't as important as what other people might feel later on. It, it doesn't work. The other thing to never say to somebody with mental illness is put it behind you. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering what I would put in my eye, <laughs> what am I distracted by talking about shit? Um, this is the Itini Swizzle Stick in Midnight Capo. And now I'm going to use the Alme Liquid Eyeliner Pencil in Black Brown, which should have run out by now, but is still going. It's not going well, but it's still going. Um... What was I saying? Oh, never tell somebody to just move on and put it in the past. Because, do you know, if you could do that so easily, don't you think you would? That's not how the human brain works. 
And for somebody who has a brain like mine, um, with the PTSD, it, there is there is scientific evidence that PTSD and other mental illnesses change the way the ba brain processes. Um, and that change in the way that the brain processes can make it very difficult to change processes of thought. Um, parts of the brain can actually uh, basically atrophy and not um, move how they used to move, like not be elastic like they used to be, um, particularly in the um, well, I think it's the hypothalamus or something. One of the parts of the brain stops being so elastic when you are in um, oh, hippocampus. That's one. The hippocampus becomes um, atrophied quite easily um, when you're in a a state of depression. Um, and when, like, because often when you depress, what you do is dissociate. You, you stop feeling emotions and um, this is actually really bad for the um, for the hippocampus for you to actually do this and uh, it has to do with what's happening in the medulla um, the kind of chemicals that it's actually getting so it's, uh, there's like all these compounded issues that go into it. So it can sometimes be really hard to shift out of a negative thought site like process because of all of this stuff. Um, I just used After Hours from this palette, the one with pan in it, to set the eyeliner and darken up a little underneath the eye. And I've got some fallout, fallout. Um, yeah, so um, I basically have got to a point in recent times where my, um, my dissociative issues, because that's the other thing I have on top of everything else, is um, a fairly extreme version of dissociation which was has been much better in recent years but when I'm really um, struggling with my thought processes and um, my internal dialogue and stuff I find it really difficult to um, do things and um, feel things um, this is the essence eyebrow stylist because, you know, I, need, I haven't dyed my brows for a couple of weeks and they are kind of non-existent. And yes, I have very thin eyebrows. I'm 40 years old, 42 years old. Uh, I, the point in time in which I became more interested in how I looked was the point in time in where eyebrows were plucked really really thin. I'd love to get my eyebrows like microbladed. Like I really would. And sometimes I'm really tempted just to shave my eyebrows off. Um, I'm also thinking I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna edit this and I'm gonna be like wow you are all over the place. Which is pretty much how my brain is at the moment. <laughs> Some days I really don't know what day of the week it is. Because um, um, you, you'll notice if you've been watching my channel for a while, I had been doing like my monthly manicures and like showing all these like cool nail arts and shit that I'd done. Um, I basically have done very few um, nail art type things. I haven't really been doing challenges or anything for the last two months. And my 
mental state had got to the point that my therapist was actually con like quite concerned. I mean, I've been seeing the same therapist for like 10 years. <laughs> he, he, he knows me pretty well. And um, when he starts to get concerned about... You know, other people get concerned first before he tends to. Because, um, you know, these mental illness tends to be quite episodic. It's like you, you'll go in flows and stuff. Um, and so he, he won't necessarily get as concerned as the, my family members get quite as quickly. And also because like, I only see him like once a month. So um, he ne doesn't necessarily uh, get the full story until I go and see him. Although I do actually have contact with him, not in session times. Um, if things get really bad, I can, like, message him and, um, you know, he can talk me off a cliff kind of thing, metaphorically speaking. Um, yeah, so, um, so that's, that's why my videos have been a lot more sporadic and there's been a lot more of the, um, not my face, or there was that one couple of videos I did where I had like no makeup on and I looked like shit. <laughs> I, I mean, it shouldn't matter, like I go down the street without makeup on, but I like the process of putting on makeup and yeah, what it actually does. Um, I'm going to use a bit of NYX Control Freak Brow Gel just to tame these wild beasts. Not quite as wild as my mother's, but... Um, yeah, so... As I said, there's, there's... Life is what it is. So I'm trying to get back into things. I'm trying to make sure that I update the things that are, like... Need updating, like, my projects and stuff like that. And I'm doing a few collabs um, here and there. I've got a collab coming up... June. Um, this is the Revlon Bold Lacquer by Grow Luscious in Black is Black. No, I didn't curl my eyelashes. I generally don't curl my eyelashes. This is not my favourite mascara. I have had this open for less than a month. Or maybe it's month and a half, something like that, and it's starting, I don't know if you can, see. it would help if my camera would focus on it, see the clumping up there, I don't like that, I don't like that, um, yeah, so, anyway, I'm trying to get back into things, and I like doing collabs because they make me feel, you know, a little bit more connected. I'm trying to remember to respond to messages that I get on my videos. Even though I say that in every video, I try to respond to all comments. Sometimes it's just that I'm not feeling social. <laughs> and uh, I don't really want to talk to people. Which, you know, I know it's terrible, but it is what it is. Um... I'm going to put a bit more of this face misty stuff on, because I can. Um, yeah, so it is what it is. <sighs> Life sometimes is not really so much like a box of chocolates, but more like a pile of shit. But I just did a little um, makeup buy from Tamara J again. She's like my enabler when it comes to makeup. Because she's just recently gone um, vegan, which I'm not. Um, I'm also not cruelty free. I know it's, it's terrible and some people really hate it. But I just like makeup and... I'm aware of the fact that most of the reason, the reason that there are brands that are 
um, not cruelty free is because they want to sell in China and China has laws that require it. Um, and I... Whilst I don't agree with animal testing, I think it's a fucking terrible thing to do. Um, and I don't go out of my way to buy products that are not cruelty free. I tend to err towards cruelty free stuff. I'm not going to throw out makeup because it's not cruelty free or because it's not vegan. Oh, this is the uh, satin lip liner in Rosewood, which I kind of need to sharpen. Um, I'm not going to throw out stuff because it's not vegan or it's not cruelty free. I, I'm going to use it and then not replace it. The only reason I throw out makeup is because it doesn't work for me or it is off or I like hate it. Um, I'm going to use Max Vegas Vault, um, which is like hard. It's funny, it's really orange, it always ends up looking pink on me. Not that I'm complaining, but I actually really like orange lipstick. Ooh. I don't actually know why I really like orange lipstick, but I do really like orange lipstick. And orange lipstick also goes really, really well with purple eyeshadow. Not that I'm wearing purple eyeshadow today. I could be. I have a purple eyeshadow thing sitting in front of me, I just didn't end up using it. So my usual process with lipstick is apply a coat of lipstick, blot that coat of lipstick, apply another coat of lipstick, blot that lot of lipstick, and then I usually add lip gloss because, you know, sometimes I like matte and sometimes I don't. Um, I'm also trying to use up this lip gloss. This is um, Cargo Lip Gloss in Sahara, which isn't another one of my projects. So. I often wear this just over like a lip liner. It's, it's, it works. It's got virtually no colour to it. It's just got a little bit of sparkle and stuff. Um, yeah, so... Um, that was kind of all over the place, wasn't it? <laughs> 49 minutes of me rambling like a fucking idiot. Um, about shit. Which, you know, it's actually not too bad for a makeup job. Often it takes me, like, longer. Usually because I'm watching YouTube. <laughs> watching YouTube videos and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, so... That's, that's pretty much it. Ow, ow, ow. Oh my god, I look like Ursula. Mermaid hair. Yay! Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> that is done my face. Um, and drank half my coffee. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, if you want to ask me any questions or you want me to clarify anything or you have shared experience or whatever leave me a comment down below click the subscribe button if you want to subscribe leave me a thumbs up if you like get ready with me type videos and i will try to respond to all comments and i'll see you in my next video see ya